Even though this integral looks familiar to its real counterpart, because we're dealing with complex z and we have complex coefficients, every step of the uh, calculation to evaluate this is more difficult than its real counterpart. So let's start. What we need to do, first of all, as, in, as if it was real, we need to factorise the bottom, which is no easy feat. What we're going to do is we're going to use the quadratic formula, uh, which is uh, z equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That's the same whether it's complex or real. So that equals, okay, so here is b and here is c and a is 1. So that equals minus 5i minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 5i minus 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 12 add 5i all over 2 and that equals minus 5i minus 1 over 2 plus or minus a half the square root of minus 25 minus 10i add 1 add 48 add 20i and that equals minus 5i minus 1 over 2 plus or minus half the square root of 24 add 10i and herein lies our second problem is that we need to find the square root of a complex number so we need to just go and do that so basically what we do to find that is we say okay well 24 plus 10i we want to find the square root of that well let the square root be a plus ib and therefore 24 plus 10i must equal a plus ib squared and then of course the square root of 24 plus 10i would be a plus ib so if 24 add 10i equals a add ib squared well that equals just expanding that a squared minus b squared add 2ab I, and all we need to do now is just compare the coefficients. So we have a squared minus b squared is 24. That's comparing coefficients of the real. And then 10 equals 2ab. That's comparing the coefficients of i. Now we could either do this by uh, solving the simultaneous equations or in actual fact we can solve this one by inspection because clearly here a is 5 and b is 1. Um, so it's actually quite easy to solve by inspection and it's always worth looking to see if you can solve these by inspection first rather than going through the rigmarole of otherwise you'd have to create a quadratic in uh, in a and solve it that way um, so we can see by inspection that it's that so therefore we know that the square root of 24 plus 10 i is equal to 5 plus i there's the a and the b which is nice and easy so we can now go back up here and we say that z therefore equals minus 5i minus 1 over 2 plus or minus 5 plus i over 2 and therefore we have that z equals either minus 5i over 2 add a half add 5 over 2 add i over 2 or z equals minus 5i over 2 add a half minus 5 over 2 minus i over 2. And that gives us either z equals minus 2i plus 3 or equals minus 3i minus 2. And remember, all we're doing at the moment is all we're doing is we're just factorising the bottom here so that we can split it into partial fractions. So we finally have it um, that z squared add 5i minus 1 z minus 12 add 5i equals z minus this one 3 add 2i times by z minus this one which is z plus 2 plus 3i and we finally have put our quadratic we factorized it like thus and so now what we can do is we can begin to actually put it into partial fractions so now we have uh, that, um, where are we, z squared, so we can z times 2i minus 1 minus 17 add 6i over, and put the, the uh, factors now, z minus 3 add 2i, z add 2 add 3i, we're now going to put it as partial fractions, and this bit here is really important, because a lot of people get this wrong, now we're going to put this as a over 
z minus 3 add 2i. Same as in the reals, add b over z add 2 add 3i. But the thing is, what we have to remember is that a and b are not reals. They can be, or in fact almost certainly will be, complex. So therefore we don't write a. Let's just um, get our rubber out here. We don't put a and b. What we actually put is a plus ib and c plus id as being our two constants which in the reals are a and b and this is really important so what we need to do now is we just take the top line here and we expand it out so we have that z 2i minus 1 minus 17 add 6i equals a add ib, and what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply the same as in the reals in order to get everything over there. So it'll be a add ib times z add 2 add 3i plus c plus id times z minus 3 add 2i. And what we need to do now is we need to find a, b, c and d in order that we then have our uh, rational fraction that uh, we have to integrate into two partial fractions. OK, so basically we have four unknowns here, A, B, C and D, and there are two basic ways. First of all, what we could do is we could compare the reals and imaginaries of the Zs and the not Zs, and that would give us four equations and four unknowns. Uh, and then we could solve the four simultaneous equations to give us A, B, C and D. Probably slightly easier to solve this is to let, first of all, let z equal 3 minus 2i and when we do that this will be equal to 0 and so we will only have an equation in a and b and then b let z equal minus 2 minus 3i and that will make that bit 0 and then we will have an equation in c and d and so we will have two simultaneous two lots of two simultaneous equations rather than one lot of four simultaneous equations, so it's probably easier. So let's do that. So first of all, let's put z equals 3 minus 2i into here, and that will give us 3 minus 2i times 2i minus 1 minus 17 add 6i equals a plus ib times by, again putting z equals 3 minus 2i, 3 minus 2i add 2 add 3i add c plus id times 0, which is the reason why we're putting z equals 3 minus 2i in in the first place, so we can ignore that. And now basically all we have is an equation in uh, a and b, and let's just tidy that up, and by uh, expanding that gives us 6i plus 4 minus 3 add 2i, that's just uh, expanding that, minus 17 minus 6i equals a plus ib times by... 5 plus i. Okay, so uh, basically this is the question again, just to remind you, this is what we're trying to do. And what we're still doing, we've already um, been going for a little while, and what we're still trying to do is we've got that now into two factors, and now what we're trying to do is make this entire thing into two partial fractions, which we then can integrate. So that's just a reminder of, of what we are actually doing. Uh, so just simplifying this up here, that gives us 2i minus 16 equals 5a add 5ib add ia minus b and therefore we have comparing the coefficients of the reals and the imaginaries minus 16 equals 5a minus b and 2 equals 5b plus a so now we only have two simultaneous equations as opposed to having four if we'd done it the other method and just solve that by whatever your favorite uh, um, simultaneous equation method is and that gives us that a equals minus 3 and b equals 1 okay so that's one set of our two unknowns found out so now what we need to do is go back and put in here z equals minus 2 minus 3i and this will get us c and d so that's minus 2 minus 3i times by 2i minus 1 minus 17 add 6i equals a add ib times zero this time and again what i'm doing is i'm putting it into this equation here and as we've said if we put in z equals minus two minus three i then this whole equation this whole um, expression is zero a times bi add zero 
add C plus ID times minus two minus three I. Again, putting Z equals minus two minus three I minus three add two I. And now let's simplify all this. Minus four I add six add two add three I minus 17 minus six I equals C plus ID times minus five minus I i.e. minus 7i minus 9. It is a bit fiddly, but as long as you're careful, um, you know, the maths itself isn't hard. It's just fiddly. Add d, and therefore now comparing reals and imaginaries, we have that 7 equals 5d plus c, and 9 equals 5c minus d. Again, just solve that with whatever um, your favourite method of solving simultaneous equations is, uh, and that gives us that c equals 2 and d equals 1. I tend to try and solve these by inspection. Um, okay, so basically now, finally, we have um, and what I'll do is I'll move straight to the next page because there is the, our, our question here. Right, so finally what we have is that we've split this into two partial fractions and we know that this is equal to the integral of i minus 3, which is a plus ib. Let's just have a look where is a, there. So a and b there, i minus 3, and c and d here. So it's i minus 3 over z minus 3 plus 2i add i plus 2 over z plus 2 plus 3i dz. So basically this whole thing here we have now split into partial fractions and here is the integral here which is far easier. As long as we ignore the singularities at uh, 3 minus 2i and uh, minus 2 minus 3i we can do the general integration here i minus 3 and i plus 2 are just constants so we can take them out and so basically that equals i minus 3 and with this is exactly the same as if it was the reals because again this is a constant here so it would be i minus 3 log of z minus 3 plus 2i add and on this one i plus 2 log of z plus 2 plus 3i plus a constant of integration. Uh, and again, as long as we ignore, and, and that is the answer to that integral there, as long as we ignore the singularities and the line integral is, or, or is not somehow involving the singularities, um, then this is the general integral. When we have to consider the uh, singularities, we'll do that in another video uh, which I'll, set, I'll put up in a few days. But anyway, basically for the basic way of solving uh, these types of questions, what we need to do, just going back over it again, so basically the first step is factorising the bottom, which is no easy task, but you use the quadratic formula, unless it's an obvious one, which generally using complex coefficients isn't. Then normally you will have to do the square root of a complex number, which we did here, and then once you've done that, then you have to find your coefficients. Remember, the A and the B will be complex numbers, not real numbers. Uh, and then once you've found your A, B, C and D, it's actually relatively straightforward to find your integral. OK, well, I hope you found that useful. If you did, then um, please like this video and subscribe to the Gresty Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.